Gillespie scores on the rebound. On this week's episode of the Rebel Report, the Vegas Golden Knights clinch a playoff spot for the second time in their two-year history. We dive into the running Rebels' new head coach, T.J. Otzelberger's recruiting tactics, and we take the UNLV baseball player Bryson Stott on a diamond walk. All this and more on the Rebel Report. Hello everyone, welcome back to another week of the Rebel Report. I'm Emily Press. And I'm Diamond Williams. Thanks to those of you tuning in online and on KCLV Channel 2. It's springtime, which means it's time for some baseball and softball. UNLV baseball players give us an inside look on what it was to be a part of the team. And we show you the art of pitching a softball from one of the best to do it in the Mountain West Conference this season. We'll get to all that later in the show, but for now, we get started with some of our top stories. After being introduced as the new UNLV head coach of men's basketball on March 28, T.J. Otzelberger went to work on the recruiting trail. Here's Kaylin Sokel to break down how Otzelberger will recruit in Las Vegas. The future of UNLV basketball is as bright as the lights of Las Vegas. We will work tirelessly to recruit elite student athletes who are equally committed to earning their degrees. And nobody's going to be more goal-driven to winning championships than we are right here with our program. Otzelberger has already reached out to four-star guard Julian Strother and offered scholarships to sharpshooters Caleb Grill from Kansas and Joan Antonio from Texas that fit his offense. People we'll always want to play a very exciting style of basketball. Like I shared with these guys today, it's about them. And for me as a coach to learn and study their game and help build their confidence and put them in position where they can be phenomenal. To recruit, Otzelberger says the vast amount of Las Vegas attractions will help in recruiting. The USA basketball is amazing. Uh, to have that on our campus, in our facilities, uh, is phenomenal. So we have so many resources, and it's such a basketball-friendly and hungry place that it's going to be pretty special. Before Otzelberger recruits new prospects, he puts an emphasis on maintaining some of the experience already on the team. We need to re-recruit these young men to our program. He said he will strive to build off of the past to be successful for the future of running Rebel basketball. We will embrace past expectations. We will not shy away from them. We're approaching the 30th anniversary of the 1990 National Championship team. A team that, ironically enough, I watched as a seventh grader up in Wisconsin. The aura around UNLV basketball is electric. The play on the court was rivaled with excitement and the arena was rocking. We will get that magic back. And so we have that historical reference in the bar that we know where we can get to. Altsberger dove headfirst into this recruiting cycle and has already signed one player who we mentioned, Jonah Antonio. Yes, and he even recruited him at South Dakota State last year, but Antonio went the junior college route and wound up at UNLV with TJ. Now tonight's news. Two years ago, professional hockey in Las Vegas was a new concept that no one had high expectations for. Now the Vegas Golden Knights have made it two consecutive years where the push for the Stanley Cup is officially on. Jason Taktijian has more on the story. T-Mobile Arena will, for the second time in a row, be hosting playoff hockey for the Golden Knights, but clinching this playoff berth proved to be worth the wait. The Golden Knights had ample opportunities to pick up a victory that would seal the deal for Vegas to once again be the spot for playoff hockey. But consecutive losses on the road to teams like the St. Louis Blues and the Colorado Avalanche delayed the celebrations for the VGK fans. And he put it right on the tape. Perrin scores! 
The following game was at the T-Mobile Arena against the Minnesota Wild where things did not go as planned for the Knights in the first two periods, trailing 3-1 going into the final period of play. But another hockey match was going on in Denver, Colorado where, if the Arizona Coyotes did not pick up a victory, they would be eliminated from the playoffs and in return, grant the Golden Knights an automatic playoff spot. And that is exactly what happened. Takes it down the right way, on top of the circles, looking in. And it's Toza. Saved! by Grubauer! Colorado came out victorious in a penalty shootout. The Golden Knights did end up scoring the only goal of the third period, but it did not matter as the Vegas fan base broke out in cheers after the final horn. Paul Stasny made it clear that the Golden Knights were not aware of the Coyotes' loss during the match and that they performed in the third period with the will to win. Uh, nothing was said on the bench. I think, uh, you know, we played the way we wanted to play. I think if it would have said something, then, you know, I feel like some guys would have shut her down a little bit and kind of played safe a little bit, protecting themselves. But um, we're going to get back on the win way. Former Ottawa Senator Mark Stone reflected on how difficult it is to make it into the playoffs, especially in his goal-filled career. You know, half the teams make it, so um, you never know when you're going to get back to, uh, to the playoffs. You never know when you're going to have success in the playoffs. Uh, I've mean, been in the league six, seven years now. Uh, only won two playoff series, so um, you have to be prepared. Um, so when you get there, uh, you have to be playing your best hockey, and uh, that's what we want to do. It is very likely that the Golden Knights will be going up against the San Jose Sharks to kick things off for their playoff push. So, for the Rebel Report, I'm Jason Toktajian. Thanks to the Calgary Flames beating the San Jose Sharks on March 31st, it is official the Golden Knights will play the San Jose Sharks in the first round of the playoffs. Let's talk soccer where the Las Vegas Lights are known to have the littest fans in town and there's one fan group, or barra, that is bringing all their energy for the whole 90 minutes. Marcos Santander has more on Lucy Fuerza and how the sport is making them a family. If there's one thing a professional sports team needs, it's fans to support them no matter what. Here at Cashman Field, there's one group that's bringing all their energy for the Las Vegas Lights. We are trying to create soccer culture or, or football culture, uh, barismo, what we call it in, in, in Latin America. And what is that? It's, it's coming over to the, you know, set, setting a party in the stands to carry on and, and to push forward you know, as fans for, for, our, for our club. And since the start, Lucy Fuerza have brought their all for the team, even using the lights as an inspiration for their name. The lights are loose and we bring the strength, we bring the, the environment, we bring the, we're the 12th man. So Lucy Fuerza was just very uh, appropriate name and, and yes, it just stuck to it. No one has an official title in the support group. They're all more like big family right yeah. here. So it's my first time. I already feel the big energy of family yeah. and I really feel welcoming, like yeah. warm hearted, like guarantee 100%. Good, good family right here. Doesn't matter who you are. They're very warm welcoming. And that's something that's very, very important. You know, you don't really see that much sometimes nowadays. Um, so it's for them to be like open, open, you know, with open arms. That's something very important. But to power every light, there has to be energy. Our tailgates may not be massive, but that's fine because the people who show up want to be here. And that's what we care about. And if you're shy, we're always open with open arms. To join the group, it's easy. Just show up to our tailgates. They're a lot of fun. Some of these people don't, do not know much about soccer, which is fine, but they know a lot about the city and they've learned to embrace soccer culture. It's, it's light and strength. It, we're, we're Vegas. That's what we do. That's what we're trying to bring to the stadium. For the Rebel Report, I'm Marco Santander. For more information on the group, follow their social media at Lucy Fuerza LV. The UNLV Rebel baseball team is 17 to 14 as of April 3rd. Balancing work in the classroom with works on the field is certainly difficult. So have you ever wondered what it's like to be on UNLV's baseball team? We got to interview some of the players of their experience being on a team thus far. UNLV Rebels baseball team was founded in 1967. What is it like to be a part of a successful Division I baseball team? Some of the players tells us more. <laughs> Best part about being on a team, getting to spend every day with my brothers. Um, these guys are really close to me and mean a lot to me, so it's really special being able to walk into this clubhouse every day and see those guys. T 
teammates that, that we got in the locker room. Uh, honestly, uh, they make it they make it great to come to come to school every day. We should win more ball games sometimes, but uh, that's baseball and it happens. Um, we got to keep this momentum going so to get more wins. What has baseball taught you that carries over into other areas of your life? Resilience, um, being able to get over any kind of battle that we're going through in the moment. Um, definitely being able to fight through hard times. It helps translate over to the real world real good. Uh, failure, for sure. Um, we fail, you know, seven out of ten times. And going into the workplace, you're going to fail, but you got to keep grinding through life. So. It's obvious this team has built a strong foundation and holds a huge impact on the players' lives. From the Rebel Report, I'm Diamond Williams. Wow, that definitely sounds like a team I'd want to be a part of. The Rebels continue with their season with a total of 22 games remaining. In the classroom, Rebel Baseball knocked their GPAs out of the ballpark in fall 2018, marking the third consecutive year the team averages 3.0 or better in academics. Their program had 16 students make the Dean's List last fall as well. Here's more on this story. Rebel Baseball made history and this time it wasn't on the field. The team posted their highest grade point average in program history this past fall. UNLV Baseball posted a program's best 3.3 grade point average during fall 2018. Not only that, the team's grade point average was the highest achieved by UNLV athletics male programs. B average with this team, uh, it's not necessarily just baseball, but a team with this high of a roster size, it's very hard to keep that GPA there uh, just because there's so many guys on the team. Stan Stolte is in his third season as the head coach and ninth overall with the Scarlet and Gray. He acknowledges that the baseball program does their best to get the top recruits. Recruit good kids that want to get their education and get their degree and, and, uh, and to hold them accountable and, and so far they've done their part. The road is one of the most difficult parts for the players which results in them missing class. When we travel I'll leave like on a Thursday morning and miss everything on Thursday which is tough so I have to definitely do the extra work and, and reach out to teachers to make sure I'm not missing too much. A common practice in Division I sports is required study hours, which is something the baseball team has avoided and it's been working for them. My philosophy is I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to make them do required hours, eight hours a week, where they're just going to sit in a room and I'm going to make them study. UNLV Athletics just posted their third consecutive semester of a 3.0 GPA. So that tells me that our methods and objective-based learning is working. Communication within the baseball program has been one of the key elements behind their academic success. And it's just kind of via text, you know, keeping up with us, saying, you know, how's everything going? Are you falling behind? Do you need, you know, help with this class? It looks like you have a C. The team will play against the U.S. Air Force Academy this weekend for the Mountain West Tournament. For Rebel Report, I'm Emily Perez. Coach Stolte was ecstatic for his players' academic achievements. The baseball team has no mandatory study hall, showing the effort the athletes put into their education. In honor of opening day for our Las Vegas aviators, we throw it over to Lydia for this week's special edition of Rebel Report Timeout. Rebel Report Timeout! Thanks guys, that's right, we are switching it up this week for Rebel Report Timeout. We are talking baseball, the home opener for the Las Vegas Aviators and the new Las Vegas ballpark with a trivia game. We've got our very own Jafar Robso representing the home team for Rebel Report. And we've got Sam Van representing the away team yeah. for Rebel Radio. All right, let's get started. Any final words before you embarrass yourself in front of your mom or your last prayers, anything? Uh, yeah, Sam's going down like Duke. Oh, Ooh. wow. Yeah. Uh -oh. That's right, I'll be on Coach K's team. Okay. All right, let's get started, guys. All right, so the now Las Vegas Aviators have been an organization in Las Vegas since 1983. Before they were the 51s, what was their nickname? Was it A, the Wranglers, or B, the Stars? Jafar, you raise it first. What is it? The Stars. Sam? Stars. The Stars. Yeah. All right, we're keeping tabs. We've got one for <gasps> one now. Okay, Don't that was an easy one. That was an okay. easy one. Okay, and also with that, the, um, oh. the Stars actually have been, um, they started in 1983 to 2000. The Wranglers were the hockey team. For Las Vegas. Yeah, I okay, so I didn't know that. How many seats? I didn't know that. that was a lucky guess. This one's yeah. not going to be so lucky. How yeah. many seats does the Las Vegas ballpark hold? Is it A, 
9,334 or B, 10,000? Sam? D, B, 10,000. Total 10, capacity. 000. B, B. Are you sure? Yeah. Total but capacity is 10,000. But they have like 8,200 seats, right? Or nine? Ooh, now I'm second guessing myself. <laughs> I just take A. A? Yeah. Jafar, you're wrong. Congratulations. Hey! 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 I mean, That's technically, I raised B first. Toes. But mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> but you changed your answer. Okay. So, question number three true or false? Las Vegas Ballpark will be home to the largest video board in mo minor league baseball, which is also larger than that of five MLB teams. True or false? A being true, B being false. Jafar, explain your reasoning. I'm so confused, but I'm going to just get a guess on here. Yes, false. No it's way. False? No way. Yeah. No way. It's actually true. Woo! The, the 3,930 square foot uh, board yes. <laughs> stands 30 feet high and 126 feet wide, which is literally larger than five MLB teams. Wow. So yeah. good job, Sam. So we've got. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. All right. So. <clears throat> far. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I see a little size in here. All right. So we've got um, question number four. <laughs> How fast did the home opener tickets sell out? Is it A, 10 minutes or B, 8 minutes? Eight. <sighs> eight. Sam? I'm going to say 10. 10? No, it's way faster than that. It's 8. It's Are eight. you sure? Yes. Yeah? yeah? I'm going 10. All right, Sam. Sam the man again with the yeah. 8. Yeah. 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 Ooh, it it's only took them 10 Almost minutes. Almost a clean sweep. Mm. Almost. Did you strike out so far? I think so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We've got one out, <laughs> one official out for the home <laughs> for the home team. Okay, question okay. number five. Come back, Come back. <laughs> Parking. For the Las Vegas ballpark, Ooh. is it going to be A, 12 bucks, or is it B, free? B is free. That's my first. Too far? B, it's free. How it's do you know that? Just lucky guess. Yeah, lucky guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You guys are both right. It's free. <laughs> Literally the only place in Vegas is free. Um, so, yeah, you guys go through that, right? All right. Ooh. All right, yeah. let's see. Ooh. Question Bye. number <laughs> six. How much will beer cost at the stadium oh. on Thursdays? <gasps> oh. Jafar, we know what you did last week, so I'm sure you're going to get this. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so is it going to be A, $1, or B, $2? Yeah, really? That's my answer? Going I mean, once? Going yeah, I hope that they keep the tradition alive of dollar beer night on Thursdays. Oh, what the hell? I didn't know that. Dollar <laughs> beer night. Yeah. Yeah. What? Cash yeah. and Field, they had dollar beer night. night. Oh. Thursday, wow. Thursdays. Oh. Yeah, so with the new stadium, they're actually increasing it to $2. Yeah. So it's B, it's going to be $2 beers uh, on Thursdays for the home games. How wow. dare they? I know, right? It's like a dollar. <laughs> really for I'll still, I'll, yeah, we'll still go. It's fine. All right, guys, it's let's see. You've got dollar a couple more now. left. This one is going to be a little bit more tricky, okay? okay. Who knows their baseball here? Question mm. number seven. <clears throat> how deep is center field? Is it A, 415? Or is it B, 380? You guys are both wrong. Center field. Oh, um, so 380 is how That's deep left, left center. Left yeah. center, yeah. Um, Man. Deep center is going to be 415. Man. Guys, fans, what do we got? Who's the winner over here? Is it Sam? Sam. All right, bring in the ties, bring in the ties for Sam. We've got a lot of aviators, ball, and a, and a bat. And then for Jafar, right. we have um, your resignation from Rebel Report in all of its entirety. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for now, that's all. Right We're going to toss it over to Marcos for this week's panel discussion. Thanks, Lydia. And congratulations to Sam on winning the first ever Rebel Report timeout trivia. Now, today on the panel, we have Isaiah, Caitlin, Kaylin, and Aaron. And we're discussing Larry Johnson, VGK, and the Las Vegas ballpark. So, first of all, I want to talk about the greatest, if for many, if not the greatest player in all of UNLV basketball history, Larry Johnson. He recently got inducted into the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame. What does this mean for UNLV? I mean, it, it means a whole lot. I mean, arguably, he's the greatest to ever play here at UNLV, and he's the first ever UNLV basketball player to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. So, I mean, yeah, obviously it means a whole lot, and, and it's well-deserving as well, because, you know, when he was here, I mean, he dominated the game in his two seasons here. Two-time consensus All-American, first-team All-American, uh, two-time Big West Player of the Year, 
in 91, he was consensus, consensus best player, you know, in, in the whole country. And, um, I mean, you know, he led us to national championship. And then in 91, you know, the, the best record, only having one loss the whole season. So, yeah, well-deserving, definitely. Yeah, and uh, he was the first, one of the first, first overall picks by, from UNLV in the, to the NBA by the Hornets. And that just speaks volumes about who he was as a collegiate player and how great he really was. Was it overdue, do you guys think? I, I think so. I think as well. It's been almost 30 years. I mean, but in a way, it kind of, it, it's kind of a good sign going into this season because, um, you know, this season we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of that national championship team. So I know um, next season is going to be a huge celebration for that team and, and now celebrating him being inducted to the Hall of Fame as well. And his uh, jersey, number four, was retired long ago, so it was definitely long overdue. Would this be something that attracts basketball players to come here instead of other colleges, do you guys think? I mean, Las Vegas is an attraction in and of itself for players to come here. Five stars, four stars, a lot of high-profile recruits come here already. I mean, this just adds to, the, you know, the attraction of the city and UNLV to future players. I think it will add a, a reminder of how great our basketball program was and how great it can be. I think this is a perfect timing. I, it is overdue, but again, it is perfect timing with the transition of coaches and everything as well. Now, going to Vegas Golden Knights, it's their second year, and they're in the playoffs. What do you guys think made them come into the playoffs again? Well, for VGK, I think we have the advantage of being in the Pacific Division. There's not that many um, great, great teams right now in the NHL that are in the Pacific Division. So uh, there's only three, um, VGK, Calgary, and Anaheim, who are going to be going to the playoffs. So that is definitely super, super helpful. And we, I think we've played really well. I think Las Vegas, um, new Las Vegas fans who are maybe new to the game of hockey, were spoiled during our inaugural season of um, – all these wins because that's not a normal season you know we did have a losing streak but we had a winning streak when Schmidt came back from his injury during the holidays again after and finally when Stone um, came a part of the team so I feel like w this is actually a really decent season as much because we play so many teams so I think we did or so many games so I think we did pretty well and I think it's well deserved to be going to the first round yeah and as uh, Aaron said the acquisition of Mark Stone really helped push VGK and the Gold Knights over the top this season helped them with their late season push for the playoffs because without him they might be a lower seed or they might have continued their losing streak as they were before they acquired him with all the injuries. And last quick question, the Las Vegas ballpark is opening soon. Kaylin, you work in Summerland. What have you seen as, f have you seen an increase of fans saying, hey, I'm definitely going to go to the games. Do you think it'll impact um, the the ballpark. Well, I, I do work in down with someone, and I have seen a bunch of new fans, everyone wanting to get out to the new ballpark. They talk about the lights, they talk about how they want to go there because it's like 10 minutes away. Nobody is going to go there, no, matter, no one's going to Cashman, but everyone wants to go to the new ballpark. Got it. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for your time for being here, and now we're going to send it over to Diamond and Emily. Thanks guys, we're gonna come back to baseball now with a feature story I absolutely love. I, Diamond Williams, take UNLV baseball star Bryson Stott on a special diamond walk where I ask him questions he was not expecting. We are here with Bryson Stott today and we're gonna find out some interesting facts that no one's ever heard of before. So, so Bryson, um, what's your favorite color? My favorite color? Uh, my favorite color is probably blue. Mm -hmm. Favorite? Thing to eat in the morning? Ooh, um, Captain Crunch cereal. Captain Crunch, pretty good. Um, favorite hockey team? Um, the Vegas Golden Knights. Of course. Of course. Um, okay, so what brought you to UNLV? Um, just can't really beat playing at home and playing in front of your family and friends every day. So, uh, after going through that recruiting process and coming here and seeing what they had to offer, it was a pretty easy choice. What is your favorite athletic brand? Um, I'd have to go with Under Armour. So, what are your plans post UNLV? Um, I mean, obviously, keep playing baseball as long as I can. Um, once once that's over, I think I want to be a firefighter. Really? What's your uh, major? Sociology. Okay, you're gonna be a firefighter. That's cool. I'm gonna save 
big world. So has this season been everything you've hoped for so far? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's tons of fun being around all these guys and winning a bunch of games. And the end goal is obviously to win the Mountain West and get to a regional and, and go on after that. So um, I think we're putting ourselves in a good spot to do that. And uh, we're going to keep having fun together and, and keep winning. So what's your favorite cartoon? Um, SpongeBob. It has to be SpongeBob. So what's your favorite TV show? Ooh, um, probably Criminal Minds. Criminal Minds? What do you like about Criminal Minds? Uh, it's kind of different every time, so you don't really have to watch every episode to see where you're really at. I'm not really good at keeping up with, with stuff like that, so to just jump in and pick an episode is, is my favorite part. What's your favorite hobby? Outside of baseball? Mm -hmm. uh, I like to bowl. I'm a good bowler. Ooh, I like yeah. to bowl. You like to swim? No. no wow, like swim. that's shocking. Bryson doesn't like to swim. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your favorite amusement park? Oof. Probably Six Flags. I haven't been to Disneyland since I was a kid, so. Six Flags, good one. Favorite vacation spot? Um, I've been to Hawaii. That was pretty cool. Uh, I like going to California, the beaches, obviously, so. Do you uh, surf? No. Don't uh, surf. I went out there once, four hours, didn't do it, so kind of gave that up. Okay. Um, have you ever been on an international trip? Yep, I went to Cuba this summer with the uh, USA team, so that was pretty, pretty cool. It was a different experience for sure. That was my first time out of the country, so. Wow, yeah, Cuba is like out of this world. Yeah. What is the biggest lesson you've learned this season? Um, team? Just, you know, I always got to have fun and, and to keep playing the game no matter if you're 0 for 50 or 50 for 50. It's, it's still a baseball game and you're still, still out here with your teammates and your coaches and, and the people in the stands. So um, biggest thing is just have fun with, with the guys around you. All right, so that wraps it up with Bryson Stott. I'm Diamond Williams from the Rebel Report. Stott is expected to be a top five pick in the upcoming draft in June, which he'll probably celebrate by eating as much Captain Crunch as he wants. It definitely takes some skill to be a college athlete, and in this case, a softball pitcher. Our very own Aaron O'Hara met a UNLV softball to get the help with the most important part of the game in this week's Show Me Your Skills. I am here with Jenny Bressler, a star pitcher of UNLV's softball team, and today she is going to teach me how to pitch a softball. I am extremely unathletic. There's different grips for like different kind of pitches, so I'll just teach you like the most basic like fastball grip. Okay. And so to do that, I'll take my glove off. You like this, like C or horseshoe. You just want to grip across that and go like that. Okay. And then you just put it. You'll step onto the mound, put it in your glove. And then how I do it, I rock back, and then I push off and go forward. And that's when, when I go forward, that's when I bring my arm back, and I go around and just release it. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> that was so bad. I don't think I can catch it. <laughs> okay, let me do one more, let me do one more. Woo! That was a, that was that a little was better. better. Yeah. Was, it was a little high, but it was good. Do I have what it takes to be a college softball player? <laughs> Maybe with a little bit more practice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jenny. Thank you for watching, and with the Rubber Report, I am Erin O'Hara. I think it's safe to say Aaron will not be trying out for this softball team anytime soon. Thanks for joining us. That's all the time we have for today. Next week, we're talking Vegas Golden Knights as they fight to stay in the playoffs and opening day for your Las Vegas Aviators. Make sure you follow us on all of our social channels, Instagram, Report underscore UNLV, Twitter, Report UNLV, Facebook, Rebel Report UNLV, and subscribe to our YouTube at Rebel Report UNLV. See you guys next week.